The Warhammer world is home to many different races, from the ancient lizardmen in the steaming jungles of Lustria to the gluttonous ogres that call the steep mountains of Morn their home. There are a multitude of differences between each of the races, but one of the least talked about would be how each faction is populated. A seemingly simple question, but one rarely addressed that has led to quite a bit of debate and confusion among fans of the lore. Where do they all come from? How can the Skaven be so numerous that they use their own young as fuel for war machines while the elves struggle just to populate a city? Well, I hope you're ready, lore seekers, because that's what we're here to find out. Let's start with the Lizardmen. The Lizardmen do not reproduce in any conventional sense. Rather, entire generations of the various species that make up their race spawn fully grown from the weirdly glowing spawning pools beneath each temple city. Back when the Old Ones walked the earth, they used their godlike powers of foresight and planned out each spawning of Lizardmen, inscribing them on the sacred plaques the ancient race holds so dear. So each spawning of Saurus, Skinks, or Croxagores is often in response to some coming event to give the Lizardmen the forces they need to prevail. Also in the vein of unique creation are the terrifying Demons of Chaos. Demons are all essentially fragments of the gods of Chaos themselves. As each is a splinter of the greater powers, no two demons are alike as they are made of a unique fragment. The larger the piece of the divine, the more powerful and mighty the demon crafted by it. The most bizarre of all the races inhabiting the Warhammer world would have to be that of the Greenskins. Orcs, goblins, and the likes of squigs are actually all strange species of fungi. When the Greenskins are rampaging around the Warhammer world in a massive wah, they appear to spread spores as they roam, fight, and die, with their corpses often providing nutrients for the new generations. This has resulted in greenskins becoming an infestation anywhere a horde of their kind is set foot, sprouting up like weeds in the jungles, deserts, and caverns of the Warhammer world. Speaking of caverns, deep beneath the Warhammer world reside the Skaven. The endless hordes of the Ratmen are bred very much like you would expect, but with a repulsive twist. All of the Skaven armies are entirely male, for the females are born as idiotic and repulsive creatures which grow to immense size as they are force-fed and injected with various chemicals and other unmentionable materials to provide the maximum amount of young to the clan who owns them. Breeding rights are an extremely competitive resource in the Under Empire. Only warlords and the highest ranking chieftains are allowed access to the brood mothers to father the staggering amounts of Skaven pups the Under Empire requires. Moving on to the races that come from beyond the grave, the undead are actually pretty straightforward. Vampires are made when an elder vampire gives a living creature the blood kiss, which is a magically charged type of bite that turns the subject into a vampire, though it is through a pretty excruciating process. Most vampires are human, but there have been exceptions, such as the time when Conrad von Karstein turned a halfling. Necromancers, on the other hand, are just humans, though they have been corrupted through the use of dark magic into something a little bit different. The rest of the forces that you would see underneath a vampire count army are just fragments of the wizard's will, basically controlling a horde of puppets. The Tomb Kings, however, are a race that can never grow in population, as they are specifically the dead of Nehekara from so long ago. However, so long as a Lich Priest remains who can access the winds of magic, the soldiers of the Tomb Kings can always be resurrected, no matter how badly they may have been destroyed before. As for the races of men, elves, dwarves, ogres, and even beastmen, they're actually born in the normal fashion of when a man loves a woman, and so on. However, there are some differences between them that are worth noting. Beastmen, for instance, populate at the highest rate, thanks to their habit of taking in mutated babies left in the forest to die, and often making mothers out of unfortunate captives taken from the realm of men to bolster their numbers. Ogres are another race that have large families, though within their culture, typically the tyrant of a tribe is the father of all the tribe's young. Men in the Warhammer world are just like us, Finally, while dwarves and elves use the same method to reproduce as humans, it's a much slower process, thanks to the long lives these races lead and the drawn-out courting rituals that they observe. It doesn't help that both of these ancient races have much smaller populations, 
due to events in their history, such as the War of Vengeance or the Sundering. That about covers all of the major races within the Warhammer world. So when a game like Total War Warhammer comes out and you're wondering about where all the greenskins joining your war are coming from or why your dwarf units are so small, now you know. If you've learned something new or just enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll be releasing more videos over the coming days and weeks covering famous battles, special characters, and important places within the Warhammer world. If you have any questions you'd like to see featured on the next video, feel free to type a comment below. See you next chapter, lore seekers, and thanks for watching.